Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be taking a look today at Hyper, uh, Hyperland Window Managers and one of the configurations for Hyperland called ML4W. I've talked a lot about Hyperland and kind of the move away from X11. You'll notice that there was some drama last, <laughs> last week. One of the main developers one, uh, has the, forked X11 and was just going to go start his own effort to try to update it and maintain it. Well, the free, the free desktop org, uh, I guess, got a little upset about that, and they, they banned him. Today, we're going to talk about something that's newer, something that's surprisingly, I think, uh, fresh, even for 2025, and that's ML4W. That's a modern look for Wayland. Uh, yes, Hyper, Hyperland is Wayland. There's been somebody, one of the my viewers has been asking, well, I know we're going to Wayland, but I don't, I don't have any mechanism to record screens. Yes, you do. Uh, you've had one for quite some time. It's called WF-Recorder. And if you install Slurp with it, you can, you can contain, you can do the whole screen. You can do just the windows if you're using Slurp, or you can rectangle around whatever it is you want to record, and it will, re and it will record uh, to MKV that files. So I think you can change that by default, but that's what it records to. So, uh, so the, first of all, I, I like control, but I also like polish. Um, and most of the window managers still look like they've yeah, lost touch in 1990s. But I, when I saw ML4W, that changed all that. I, I have been following, there's, a, there's three main people that have been dealing with Waylon on YouTube. Stephen Rabe is one of them, and the other one is Jay Kulik. Uh, Jake, if, and I think, I think Stephen Rabe uses, I think he watches also Jay Kulik. Jay Kulik is kind of, the experimenter. He's the one that goes out, figures out new stuff, and then will he'll he'll work up some experimental scripts to show off and showcase that. But you know, he's out here on the on the bleeding edge of things. So if you try to follow his work, you may end up depending upon what version of the stack it is that your stuff won't install. And, you know, he's, he's, like I said, he's way out here on the, on the bleeding edge of things. So you're going to have to be caught up with his package dependencies. Otherwise you may not get what he's got working. Plus Hyperland is rapidly uh, being added. There's new features coming all of the time. It's, it's a constant uh, build. So yeah, and there's a lot of people working on it. It's very busy. And typically what happens with really busy uh, projects like that is you end up with a lot of churn, a lot of stuff happening, new versions coming, new features coming. And so that's Stephen Rabe, was, he's trying to create a stable platform for you to be able to use this in your daily work. And yeah, that he's, he's drinking or he's eating his own dog food, as we say. He's what he's developing. He's using for his own environment. So he wants a stable platform. He can come back on, turn on, it'll work, day in and day out. So yeah, that and and what about okay? So I put this on. I started out with it on a laptop, which was my uh, Meteor Lake machine. That is a 4K OLED display. And so I had to have fractional scaling, and that works. It doesn't have all of the HDR features just yet, but there are some of them that are in some of those features that are there and some of them that are still coming. So, But as far as 4K and fractional scaling, yeah, that works just fine. I'm able to read the screen. It's not a problem. 
I can, you know, it, it can scale it up a little bit for these old eyes to be able to see things. And yeah, it's working fine. So that's what we're going to look at today is not just Hyperland, but ML4W. I really like what Stephen Rave is doing. And I would, I'm going to put a link below and I, and I hope you check it out. What I know about ML4W on AMD's HX9370. It is working, obviously. Uh, partially, I don't have it fully functional because I don't have it wired into the uh, to the S, to the, the SDDM yet. But I'll get it. I'll get it. So, and we found that out together. This chip uses, I think it's RDNA. They they say it's not three and it's not four. It's kind of halfway in between. Uh, but if you look at the marketing stuff, it says RDNA 3. Uh, yeah, it is not an R RDNA 4. I believe you have to go all the way up to the Ryzen 9000 series so to get that. But yeah, uh, I don't think this chip had that yet. So, However, it, I can say one thing. It is fast. It is very powerful. It has, uh, it, it has more performance than, than, the, uh, than the desktop back there. Which is a uh, yeah, which is a Ryzen seven thousand, and and I think that's kind of the point. This isn't this isn't going to be a polished end of the line review. This is this is a field test, okay? That I took you, I took you along with me. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's why I'm going to leave things today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the look at installing Hyperland for the first time. Anyway. Hope to see you next time. Please like and subscribe as always. And if you can, share it out with your friends. And I'll be coming back as I get Spice and everything else up and running and Burt Viewer and all the tools that I use. But uh, that I need, and I, I hope to see you again soon. And bye for now.